I'm here with Julian of Benita to talk about their latest record, Egg Bomb, out April 12th on Season of Mist, another slapping meat fest that this record really delivers. I wasn't expecting anything less from you guys. I wasn't expecting an old ballads record, that's for sure. So, uh, Julian, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you for joining me for a chat. Well, hello, bro. It's my pleasure to be invited by you again. Every time it's such a pleasure. And and thank you very much for the review you made of our last album, Egg Bomb. I, I watched it, uh, I think it was yesterday. And uh, really, uh, thank you for your kind words. And I'm very happy that you liked the album. Oh, it was a great record. So so let's start off with with the concept, with the idea. Of, I don't know if everybody knows this, but you work in the medical field. So obviously that influences a little bit of your music, maybe more than a little bit, but it influences your music, definitely influences this record. Uh, how, how do you find these topics and how do you uh, manage to transport uh, something like this, Ekbom, into a record format? Well, I, I always start with uh, with symptoms I, I meet at my job as I work as a nurse uh, in psychiatry. And uh, for, for egg bomb, uh, I have a patient who's suffering with hallucinations uh, about insects. He sees, he sees insects on his body and sometimes crawling under his skin. And uh, I find it was a very good topic to use because I never did it before in any the ninth album. So uh, at first I decided that for once, the character of the album would be a girl because I noticed that I always talking about a guy because I guess as I'm a guy, it's natural for me to talk about a guy. But I say, yeah, let's let's use a, a, a girl this time uh, who falls into schizophrenia. And uh, the main the main symptom uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, psychiatric illness is of course the hallucinations about insects, and I know that egg bomb syndromes is a is a pre is a very precise pathology uh, with hallucinations of insects and bugs. But it's not exactly the egg bomb syndrome I'm talking about in the in the new album, as uh, the the disease is schizophrenia in the album, and egg bomb syndrome is something a bit different. Schizophrenia has other symptoms, but only uh, hallucination of bugs. But I I thought that it would be uh, a very enigmatic name. Because I guess, uh, except in psychiatry, no, nobody knows what egg bomb means, and uh, I had questions. I, I, I didn't. I didn't know what it meant. I actually had to go on Google and Google it to see what, like, like what is this? Like, I've never heard. I've never heard of the term before, and just by googling, I, I, I was like, "This is even a thing." I, I, I honestly, I, I was puzzled by it. Well, actually, it's the name, of course, of, of uh, the professor, who discovered, the scientist who discovered the, um, the, the egg bomb syndrome. I guess it's his name. I think he's from Sweden, and it's a pretty common name in Sweden, but I didn't know that. And uh, I had an interview for a, for a, for a Dutch, uh, Dutch website, and they told me that egg bomb in Dutch means something like a big bomb in Europe or something like that. But it, it has a totally different meaning. So it, it it was very funny to learn that. And I told him, no, I just wanted to have an, an enigmatic name because people was like, what is it? Is it only the letters mean something or, or is it the name of a demon or something? And uh, I, I knew it would be a, at the same time a catchy name and something pretty mysterious that when people want to, to, to dig into the concept with this name. Uh, also, the artwork of the album kind of plays off of the concept. Uh, how important is the artwork? Because I always find when it comes to a benighted record, the artwork is always very graphic. Uh, it, it doesn't hold back. It always has this very uh, jarring appeal to it. Uh, so when you're putting the concept of the album together, at what point do you start to think about the artwork and then merging that artwork with the concept? Well, I always try to 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 place myself in the position of uh, of the, 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 the person suffering with mental illness, and uh, the way he can uh, he can looks at looks at himself, you know, like dysmorphophobia things and stuff like that. He can see him a bit a bit deformed, and uh, I always try to find some uh, metaphoric and sim symbolic way to to express how the how the character can imagine himself. And uh, what kind of torment he is uh, he is into, and uh, for egg bomb it was obvious that at first I wanted to have several steps of decomposition of the body until it turns into this uh, insect 
demon. But uh, I think two two different covers were were enough at the at the end. And of course, I, I asked uh, Grind Design Robert from Grind Design to do the artwork because he did such a great job with Obscene Repressed. But I, I wanted him for the, the new album also. And uh, and yeah, I think when you when you see the cover and when you watch the music video and you enter the album, I mean, you're totally inside the world of uh, the schizophrenia of the girl I'm talking about in the, in the concept. To get into the mind of, of the character, to get into the mind of the person suffering from it, how much research do you have to do in order to get as much of the facts right as possible? Actually, I don't need to do that much of research because I, I work with people suffering with this kind of disease every day. So uh, I have interviews with them every day to, to, help them, to, to help them express what their feelings are and how, how they... Or they they try to to handle their fear, their their anxiety, and everything. So I I know pretty much I, I know a lot about how they feel, and it's pretty easy for me to to try to understand and try to. Of course, I'm not psychotic, so it, I I can only touch with a finger the, uh, the the awful pain they are in they are into every day. But uh, but I think I can I can imagine a bit uh, what the representation they have of themselves in their in their delusional state. And uh, and all the how can I say that all the the violence, the visual violence it represents to uh, to have the uh, to have the impression that uh, that everybody is against you and that uh, at some point you're some kind of monster that people try to to fl to to flee away from. And uh, yeah, for me it's pretty easy. I don't have to do that much of research to to be able to dig directly into the story. When you're putting an album like this together with this concept, having that personal experience of seeing it firsthand, does this also help you be a little bit more connected with your own patients that you work with? Because you're you're kind of telling their story, not in a direct way, but you're kind of telling their story. And I, I feel like that might give you the right tools to be even better at, at the job that you do. Yeah, because it, it makes me... Um... I, I have to I have to put myself in their position and and, try, and it, I think it develops even more empathy to mm -hmm. to understand what they are dealing with and how hard it can be because as I told you I can only imagine it I think I'm far far away from the reality of the pain they are in every day um, but it helps me also to to how can I say that to step away from all the representation that people have about the, the mental illness in general and uh, and stick to the reality of the symptoms. And uh, that's something that's very important for me because uh, maybe I told you that before, but in, in the Benighted albums, uh, never, never a character hurts someone else but himself. So Because the people suffering with this kind of disease, they are the most vulnerable people, people in the world. And uh, that's why they need proper care and help to be able to have kind of, of a normal life uh, without being too much in pain, uh, and yeah, dig digging digging this kind of story also, I guess, helped me to be a, to be a better nurse because it, it forces me it forces me even more to um, to try to to understand what they are dealing with and, and what they are feeling. You, you mentioned that uh, everything is about immersing yourself in the concept, the artwork, the sound, the lyrics. Everything comes together as one. Now, when you're putting yeah. all of the different pieces of the puzzle together for this record, which was the hardest piece of that puzzle to come in place? Uh, I would, the music video, I guess. I, I thought about everything before before the album. For example, the, my, my friend Elena, who's the main actor in the Scars video, uh, I thought about her way, way before I ordered the cover to Grind Design, for example. I, I asked her, I want to do uh, the new album, like, like obscene repressed, like a movie, and for that I need some kind of casting. So I need I need people to have uh, to have a face in their mind when they are reading the, the story of this of the girl. And I, I I asked her, would you be okay to be some to be the edgy of uh, of the new Benighted album and appear on the cover and appear on the music video, so people really can identify you and uh, and enter the the album like they would be entering a movie. And uh, and she said, yeah, of course, I would be I would be honored to to do it. And on the for the music video of Scars, it's always tricky, you know, to 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 try to 
to put in scenes uh, something so not concrete at all, you know, it's a, it's something very symbolic and everything. But I, I was very, very happy about the result uh, because when you see the, the music video for Scars, I mean, you directly in the, in the, in the psychotic crisis with the violence, with the creepy atmosphere, with the things changing very, very fast uh, from, from a part to another, so, uh, and a lo lot of violence coming to your face when it's slowed down, but you feel something, something creepy is, is, is coming closer and then the violence starts again. It's exactly like the psychosis. Yeah, your vocal range on this record is phenomenal. Like, I, I think this is one of your best albums vocally. Uh, you're, you're getting better with age. You're like a fine wine. Uh, can you work on your vocals uh, in between albums, in between tours? Like, is, is do you have a work schedule that allows you to not just maintain what you've been doing, but also improve upon it? Not, not, not really. I mean, I, I when I when I practice, it's always for fun in my car, for example. When I try to to develop some other kind of vocals, and uh, to I just use the I have I think. I have four very different techniques to put to put my to, to to use my voice, and in every one I can do slightly different vocals. So I I just try to to use what I already know, uh, and uh, and develop it with you know maybe in a in a higher in a in a higher tone or uh, do it a bit a bit more disgusting you know with more <laughs> in it, uh, and uh, yeah for this album I I didn't work more than uh, on another Benighted album, but I just had more time than usual. And I, I really had a lot of fun uh, finding the parts I wanted to do. And uh, and for example, for the chorus uh, of each song, I really took my time to have something very easily um, recognizable and catchy and easy to sing, even even for people who don't, don't know, don't really know uh, extreme metal i mean something that really sticks to your mind and you're able to scream it with me on stage and uh yeah that was one of the main the most important point for me for this new album to have catchy choruses and uh and interesting vocals from the beginning until the end it worked because your, your vocal performance really stands out uh at least from my standpoint when i when i was listening to this record i felt like you were a little bit more loose a little bit more alive and you created an incredible flow with the with the with your range as you're going through the songs like the songs musically have all the ebbs and flows of a story that you're telling but vocally you are going through the same kind of uh roller coaster ride so when when you're approaching a song musically and you know the concept you know the story inside how much do you prepare beforehand in terms of where you want one side of your range to go maybe a little bit harsher maybe a little bit heavier is that all planned out or is a little bit more the feel of the moment well, it's always the feeling of the moment, and sometimes when I'm not satisfied, I just I just leave the track on the side for one or two days, and I start working on it again with a fresh mind, because I, I really want um, I don't want to I don't like to calculate stuff. I mean, I, when, when I when I'm into a track, I focus on the track without being uh, uh, can I say that disturbed by the other ones. You know, I'm not thinking, like, oh, if I do that in this song, so on the other song, I have to do this or this. Uh, I, I don't work like that. When I'm inside a track, I try to focus on it. And as soon as it's not finished, I don't work on the other ones. And I let myself uh, guide by the spirit of the track and the music. Manu, Manu created such insane riffs that it was very easy for me to get the inspiration to 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 to, to find some vocal parts on it. And I, I, it was really a huge pleasure for me to work on the on the tracks that he wrote because so many things came to me naturally because the songs were already very powerful so you I don't I didn't have to you know to to um, to okay, to compensate some I, I would say less powerful parts and uh, you know compensate with the vocals everything was already very very powerful so I just had to to find my stuff to make it reach another level and it was pretty easy at the end. Uh, you you are a vocalist that I feel like a lot of people look up to in, in terms of what you bring to the table, your delivery, your range. But who do you look up to? Is there is there somebody out there in, in, in the world of death metal, grindcore, that you can say that it has been an influence on your vocal approach and your vocal style? 
Well, at first, when, when I started, it was Chris Barnes. It was when we were singing with Cannibal Corpse. Uh, when I started to, I didn't, I had no idea how to growl, and I tried to find some techniques on my own. But uh, more recently, I mean, I'm a huge fan of what uh, Travis Ryan from Cattle Decapitation does, for example. He's an incredible vocalist. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of uh, Ben from uh, Shadow of Intent, who has, a, he has such a crunchy way to do his growls. I, I love it, but it's not exactly the kind of vocals that I can do because my I, I force in a different way with my false vocal cords. So I, I don't think I can do this kind of voice. But for example, um, we, we made this song with um, with Oli from Axpire. And uh, this song, you, you see the flow of Oli. I mean, it's totally insane. And when Crazy. I received it, yeah, when I received this vocal part, I was like, oh my God, it's a, it's at the same time fantastic. And But I was thinking, well, if it's one of the singles we are about to, 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 to release, how will I be able to do it if we have to play it on stage? So for this, for this one, for this special song, I had to work very hard to be able to do my vocals and Oli's vocals as well. And now I can do it. So we will play it on stage on tour. But it, it was really a lot of work to to understand how how he's doing his flow to be able to sing that fast. And uh, and uh, yeah, it was a huge challenge for me to be able to sing the whole song just by my own. But now I can do it. <laughs> His delivery is insane. He is. I, yeah, really. I, I honestly, I don't know how you worked your way in to be able to do it. Because when, I, when I've seen them live, if I wasn't watching it, I, I I don't think it's possible. Like you you listen to it on the record, but you feel okay. Maybe he's taken like ten takes, you know, in order yeah. to put it all together. But when you see it live and you see the way he delivers, and it's like it's like he's having a hot dog. He's not even trying hard. He just does it. it it's really incredible. Yeah, it sounds very natural when he when he does it. He he, he showed me the way he was briefing at the same time he was he was singing, and it's really impressive. It's something that I. Absolutely cannot do, but uh, I think there are many, many songs of Axe Player that I wouldn't be able to sing. But for, for Nothing Left to Fear, I was able to catch the, the very short instant you can take your breath again and, st and start again. So it, it was it was, it was was possible for me to do it at the end, but it, it was a lot of work. <laughs> you, you, you mentioned about this record, the concept of putting it all together, uh, the, the horror story that you're telling on this album. And that got me thinking, have you ever thought about writing a horror novel, maybe based off a record or, or writing the novel and then the novel inspiring a record, either one way or the other? I would love that. I would love that because every, uh, I think for the last, especially the last three albums from Necrobreed, uh, I really imagine a movie in my head when I'm, uh, when, uh, when I'm uh, writing the lyrics and uh, I, I, could do, I could do a whole scenario of... Uh, um, of three movies with our three last albums. I mean, I, I could develop many, many things. For example, for the last album, I, uh, I, um, I had in mind many, many things. Once this girl will be in a, in a mental institute, what could happen to her? And uh, I had many, many ideas. It could be a, easily a movie, I guess. I don't have the contact to be able to do this kind of job because I, it, I, it's, it must be very, very tough and very specific to do. But I would love to learn how to write scenario and put my ideas in it, uh, especially as I told you, because uh, what, what, I, what I'm talking about, it's, uh, it's the reality of the mental illness, not, uh, not some fantasy or invented stuff. For, uh, no, and, and I think that's the credit because you work with it firsthand, you see it firsthand, you have that firsthand experience. And then you write a, a record like this that that brings that sort of thing to light. Like a lot of people listening to this album never heard of this condition before, and they're discovering it as they're listening to the record. And when I when I hear the lyrics and I see you delivering the lyrics, I, I honestly feel like there is something in you that that there's a writer in you to write a little bit something a little bit bigger, a little bit more grandiose. So that's why I was wondering. <laughs> If I would have the contact to to help me to do it, I would be very happy to do it because it's, it's it passionates me to to have ideas of scenario and write write stories uh, talking about mental illness. Hey, Netflix throws money at everybody. I think they should contact you and and write a new series about this kind of stuff. I th I think it would be incredible. I think you have the mind for it and you definitely have uh, the talent to do it. So uh, hopefully okay. somebody from Netflix will uh, will send you an email and reach out. They have a lot of money. <laughs> With pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> you watch now, it, don't visit it. 
<laughs> Let's talk a little bit about this East Coast tour that you guys announced recently about a Canadian East Coast tour. Um, let me ask you this. Touring in Canada, obviously, maybe not as appealing as touring in the U.S., but obviously a lot cheaper than touring in the U.S. Um, is that the reason why? Like, what went into your mind in order to put this tour package together with Cognitive uh, for these East Coast tours? It was actually uh, Rob's initiative from Cognitive. Uh, he contacted me and he wanted to do a, a bigger tour. But the thing is that we've been at it. We all have full-time jobs aside and uh, with the European tour we already had the French tour with the uh, the, the warm up fest it was not possible to have more more uh, more days off to to be able to do a longer tour that's why I told him we cannot do more than that we would have loved to and I'm sure we will be back next year and do the the, the, uh, the west coast this time but uh, it, it's just a matter of uh, how long we can tour or not because of uh, of the days off we have from work Okay, I, th I thought we also had something to do with the visa costs, and because I don't think it's as expensive to tour in Canada, it's a lot easier, isn't it? No, no, it, it, it's way it's way easier than in the U.S. Of course, yeah, yeah, it's not it's not that expensive. No, no, it's okay. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the East Coast on this tour. I, I think you guys are going to completely demolish it. Uh, now, looking forward to it, do you have uh, certain bars that you wanted to 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 reach? Is there anything in your mind that you're hoping that this tour will achieve? You mean in Canada? Yeah, yeah. Well, no. I mean, we didn't we didn't tour in Canada since 2015, and uh, already almost ten years ago. <laughs> and uh, I just time. I just I just wanted to be back to Canada because it was such a great experience, and we met so many great people there. Uh, I mean, for for me, touring it's not only uh, it's not only playing the benighted music everywhere. It's also Meet a lot of people. I'm in contact for years, for example, and uh, and and uh, and have fun. I mean, meet people, share the music, share everything, share drinks, party together. This is this is why I'm touring. That's the, the main purpose of of Benighted for me. And uh, when when I was contacted by Rob to to do this Canadian tour, I was like, finally, sure, yeah, let's let's do it. I would be so happy to see all the friends I know from 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 Canada and and bands also. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was very excited when you when you asked me if we wanted to do a Canadian tour. I was super excited when I saw it. I was like, there better be a Toronto date. There was a Toronto date at Sticky D, so I'm super excited to see you guys. I think it's a great package. I think it's a short tour, but it's going to be a tour that's going to deliver. And you're going to be playing in Quebec, which obviously speaks French, so it's going to be a little bit home away from home, if you will. Yeah, it's true. They're gonna they want to welcome you guys with open arms now. When, when you're not working at your full-time job and when you're not making music, uh, what do you do for fun? What do you do to kind of disconnect from the crazy world of your work and then the crazy world of your music? Well, first I have my family. Of course, I have my girlfriend, my daughter, who, who is uh, 17. And, uh, and I have, of course, my, one of my biggest passion, the sport. I'm practicing, I'm, I'm training a lot. I have I have two cross training sessions with a friend of mine who is a coach twice per week. Uh, I train also at the gym twice per week with my uh, my dad. I, I just arrived from the training with my dad, and my dad is seventy years old, and he he, he practices sport his whole life, and we train together. It's it's, it's amazing moments that I, I will really keep in my mind forever. I mean, it's such a such a luck to be able to share this kind of stuff with your seventy years old dad. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I would say sport. Sport helps me a lot because I, I, I don't know if I told you, but I, I played rugby for 17 years when I was a bit, a bit younger. And I, I had to stop because of my back injuries. But uh, yeah, I never stopped going at the gym. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's the, I think we've been at it when I'm on stage and I release all the, all the energy. Sport is also the best way to release the energy I have left when I need to... To cool down, for example. Yeah, because you, you have a super stressful job. Uh, I can imagine how demanding, uh, not, not just physically, like I'm mentally demanding. Oh, more mentally than physically. Uh, yes. Yeah, both. It's both physically and mentally very demanding. I mean, the things that you have to see on a day-to-day -day basis, the things that you have to deal with, then you bring that into your music. So it's not like you're leaving it at work. You're bringing that into your music. Now you got to deal with it in the music that you make. 
I, I can I can see that you need somehow to find an outlet where uh, you can release all of that and just kind of like be yourself. I, I think it's really cool that you train with your dad. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I love it, and I'm very lucky to to have a dad who can uh, who, who who can still have the motivation to practice uh, at his age. It's great. Uh, does he listen to your music when he's working out? Uh, no, no, no. He's, he's not into metal at all. But every time we we play nearby, he's very, very happy to come to the gig and uh, and meet all the people because uh, he likes the you know the, uh, how friendly metalheads are. I mean, he, he loves it and he tells it to his friends. You should come. They are so nice. They invite you for beers everywhere. You drink all night, <laughs> and he he really he really likes the spirit of uh, of, of metal. So every time he has the occasion to come, he he, show, he shows up. Yeah. I think it's great that he's so supportive, even though he doesn't like the music, and he probably thinks like yeah. that these people are crazy. Uh, and and you know he, he sees it from a different angle. But the fact that your dad is that involved in your life, I think that's great. Uh, oh, yeah. I try to do the same with my kid. It's not it's not easy, but it builds the bond for a lifetime, and I think that's super important. And exactly. to see that and to see that on your life, I'm I'm very happy for you, uh, Julian. Thank you very much for your time, man. I know you're super busy. It's always a pleasure to thank talk you. to you. Uh, we'll talk again in the fall when you're in Toronto. I'm I'm planning on taking you out for dinner, having some drinks, uh, some food, and then watching the show, having a good time. With pleasure. Thank you again for this interview, Pedro. And see you very, very soon and see you the latest in September and have fun together. Take care, man. Take care too. Thanks, bro.